So we're going to be talking about the full spoilers for Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 89. As of right now, I'm still working with YouTube about Geekdom 101 and the copyright stuff. I should be allowed to upload by Friday at the latest, unless something else happens or... You know, things don't work out. I should have uploads back up on Friday. Now, this manga chapter is going to be coming out on Thursday. So, what I'm probably going to do, guys, is I'm probably going to do a stream on Friday. And that'll be my review. You know what I mean? My Friday stream will be my review. I'll be talking to all you guys on the Geek Them 101 channel. But... That'll be the review. But right now, let's discuss the spoilers for chapter 89. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't click the video. The chapter's going to be out by Thursday morning. Okay. Dragon Ball Super chapter 89. Last warning, y'all. Here we go. And, I, and also, I want to say I want to thank y'all for your support. It means a lot to me. I'm glad you guys are over here. Obviously, it's not going to get the amount of... You know, it won't get the amount of traction that Geekdom 101 does. But that's okay because this is just a hiccup on the road. And I'll be back... Very soon. Very, very soon. Arrival Appears is the name of Chapter 89. The chapter opens with Trunks trying to see the contents of the disc he found a few days earlier during the Mount Butterfly incident. That's This is basically stuff we already knew from the drafts. After numerous failed attempts to bypass security, Trunks decides to use Bulma's computer to access the disc, so he sneaks into her lab. Using Bulma's computer, Trunks gets through the security... In the disc, it contains the blueprints of a creature, Cell, at the larva stage. Yeah, we saw that in the draft. As Trunks wants to dig deeper, the computer gets infected with a virus and it crashes. Trunks quickly takes out the disc. That's just funny. Bulma arrives with Bra and catches Trunks, who has broken her computer. She says Trunks has inherited Vegeta's talent in breaking her things. In the meantime, or in the meanwhile, little Bra fixes the computer and saves it from the virus attack. Bulma says that Bra is much more talented than Trunks at such a young age. Is that a teaser for her maybe being a fighter or at least being a tactical part of the team in the future? I really hope so. I like the idea of Bra being like a scientific wizard because then in future stories, you could have her be the scientist and kind of take Bulma's place. We're talking about down the road, like past end of Z. I think that would actually work out really well. Trunks happiness knew no bounds. Oh wait, let me go back for a second here, sorry. Bulma then informs Trunks that Maya's joining Blue Hall High School as well, and she wants them to go to school together so Trunks better not make it late. So I guess Bulma knows about the truth about Maya and is just kind of using it to manipulate Trunks. I'm guessing that. Don't really know for sure. It just, you know, I'm not like upset over that. It, it, I feel like the Trunks My thing is kind of played out. I've said that before in videos. And um, this chapter obviously will expound on that because there's a lot more to come with My. I did see some of the scans on this. Trunks' happiness knew no bounds. He walks to school with Mai. Every one of his schoolmates' boys on the road comes running towards him to get a chance to talk to Mai, but Trunks shoes them away. The reason why Bulma made Mai join high school is that she didn't want the people to come up with strange rumors about her not attending school, even though she was like a teenager. Okay, so that means that Bulma just pretty much knows what they did. Then why does she not wish for them to get their regular age back? I don't really understand that. Mai introduced herself as the new transfer student in the class. The teacher assigns Trunks the job to fill Mai with the various things at school. Trunks obviously agrees. Scale asks Mai, that's one of the, that's one of the uh, schoolmates, if she has a boyfriend. Trunks intervenes before Mai could answer. The teacher announced that there's another transfer student. The student introduced himself as Beta, because, you know, Alpha, the Alpha androids that Dr. Hedo created were in the previous chapter. So now we're going to move on to get to Beta. And then, of course, we have Gamma 1 and 2, which we'll talk about more later. Rula takes the job of helping out Beta with the school things. Next period is PE. Trunks and others play basketball. I love that shot of Trunks playing basketball, by the way. There's a lot of focus on Trunks. A lot of If you're a Trunks fan, you're getting a lot of stuff with him in it this, this month and this whole arc, to be honest. Trunks shows his extraordinary skills in the sport to impress Mai. Well, of course he does. He's Trunks. He has superpowers. You know, what do you expect? But Beta comes from behind and takes the ball from Trunks and goes toward the basket for a goal. So it looks like they're positioning Beta to be the alternate love interest of Mai in this weird like love triangle gimmick they're going for. But of course, Beta's an android. We all know this, guys. It's not even a secret. We all know what's going on. He can't be 100% human, but I am curious about what kind of android he is. Trunks uses his super speed to block Beta from scoring the goal. Everyone's surprised to see Trunks cover that distance in an instant. Still, Beta manages to score a goal 
Uh, Trunks is shocked. The girls think Beta's cool and Mai throws a suspicious look at him. It's weird they say score a goal because usually for basketball, I mean, it is a goal, but it's also like a dunk or, you know, a three-pointer or whatever he shot. I guess we'll see when the chapter comes out. A close-up shot of Beta's eyes reveal that he's been transmitting the video feed to none other than his creator, Dr. Hedo, who is a, at a new hideout near the port. Doesn't say if it's airport, seaport, or spaceport, but... There it goes. Along with his alpha androids, he watches the video feed. So now things get interesting. Seeing Trunks' super speed, Dr. Hedo asks his alpha android if Trunks is the guy who beat them and stole the disc, but all they remember is a blonde kid. Dr. Hedo sighs and regrets not installing surveillance cameras at the Mr. Mr. at the Mount, I'm Mr. Mount Butterfly Factory. I mean, yeah, you gotta do that. The only clues they have are that. The human possesses superhuman strength to defeat an android and that he's from Blue Hall High School. You must find him beta number one. He orders beta. So this, so far, I'm actually kind of digging this. I was worried about the um, slice of life stuff, but it's actually coming out pretty pretty fun. Like, I'm having a good time reading this. Hopefully the chapter will come out good like that. Back in class, Mai keeps staring at beta from behind. Trunks tells Mai that beta's goal was just a fluke. And he'll show her an even better shot next time. All right, bro, you're trying too hard. Come on now. She's going to know you're trying too hard, but she ain't a teenager, bro. She's probably been hit on multiple times in her life by multiple different dudes. You ain't going to impress her, dog. But whatever. It is what it is. Mai tells him to keep it down. There you go. Trunks is confused. So Mai lets him know that Beta's not human as she noticed a bruise on his neck. Huh. Trunks gets scared seeing that he thinks Beta is a ghost. Why is Trunks so dumb, bro? Like, he's the son of Bulma and Vegeta, and he's like an idiot. That I don't like. How can Mai figure out he's an android and not Trunks? You know what I'm saying? Mai denies that and tells him that she thinks he's an android. Yeah, buddy, it shouldn't be that hard to figure out. But a different type as compared to number 18. She also thinks that he's here looking for someone. Trunks talks to himself in his mind. He doesn't feel any life energy coming from Beta. There you go, buddy. It ain't that hard to figure it out. That's like the androids were. He thinks he's a friend of those zombies and he's there to kill him. He worries his Sam and X1 identity might be revealed to the public at this rate. How about like him actually hurting people? What about that, bro? <laughs> I don't know. Hedo's very suspicious of Trunks. He orders Beta number one to check if he has any superpowers. So Beta throws a ball at Trunks from behind. Trunks notices it and pretends to tie his shoelaces. The ball hits the walls and then the fire extinguisher inside b beside Beta. At lunch, Trunks wants more soup, but he's denied as everyone is supposed to get the same amount. Beta throws his soup from behind. Trunks notices it and catches the soup in his bowl. He thanks Beta. Hedo is annoyed now. This sounds like right out of like Spider-Man 1 with Tobey Maguire when he with Flash, that whole scene where he catches the food. It just reminds me of that. Like there's definitely influence from that, yo. Don't deny it. Math class. Both Trunks and Beta are called to solve a problem on the board. Beta gets it right. Trunks is wrong because he's an idiot. Hedo celebrates this win against Trunks even though he's unrelated to the mission. It's just, I, when I say he's an idiot, I'm only playing around, but I'm also like somewhat serious because I don't like the way he's being written as kind of a buffoon, dude. Like, I don't, I don't really like that. And Bra's the smart one. Like, he, she, he's the son of Bulma, man. He had to have inherited some of her brain. Come on now. It's not a big deal, man, but it's just annoying. After school, Beta waits behind a wooden block as Trunks and Mai walk that way. He plans on dropping the block on Trunks. Trunks notices this and worries that if he dodges it, it'll hit Mai. Just then, Goten lifts a truck to take out the tennis ball that was under it. I, I want to see that panel. That sounds awesome. Goten gives the ball to the girls and tells them that it was a light truck. Okay, bro. That's just funny. Beta sees this. He concludes that Goten is the superhuman that took down the alphas. Great. Hedo orders him to transform and get the disc back from him. Beta rips off his shirt and, and wears his superhero suit. Goten thinks of, thinks of him to be a cosplayer. Mai figures out that it's none other than Beta. Trunks doesn't want them to fight in front of the school and their classmates. Beta introduces himself. My name is Beta Number One. I'm Dr. Hedo's masterpiece. So I guess the name Dr. Hedo is now out there and it's not a secret anymore because he referred to himself as that. Yeah, that's not really a smart move there either. You want to be quiet about where you're coming from because that could lead to something. Goten says he's never heard of Hedo and asks if he can go home as he's getting late. 
Beta number one attacks him, but he dodges it with ease. Everyone at school watches them fight. Goten wants to settle the outside, settle this outside the school, but Beta disagrees. He just wants the disc he stole from the doctor. Okay. I he wants the disc back. Not a big deal. Goten has no idea about the disc. Trunks figures out that Beta is stronger than those zombies, so he asks Mai to hold his bag for him as he wanted to go to the bathroom. Beta charges a serious attack. Goten figures he can't just dodge it. He has got no choice but to counter this. He's cornered. I don't know, bro. He's pretty fast, but hey. I thought Goten was really fast. They're, they all are. All these characters are very fast. But maybe Beta's really fast too. I don't know. Trunks arrives and stops Beta's punch. Scale recognizes Sandman X1 as the new hero in town. Alphas recognize Sandman X1, this is from inside the computer, as the one who took them down, like from the laboratory. Hedo orders Beta to get him. Trunks gives Goten the transforming watch and tells him to run away from the scene. Beta catches Sandman X1 off guard and lands a blow on him. Sandman X1 smiles and throws Beta to a long distance who then lands in the schoolyard. Sandman X1 hits Beta with his down cycle kick. So this is basically the action part of the story. Rula and Scale decide to go to the schoolyard to watch the fight. Maya wonders if she knows who Sandman X1 is as if as he felt familiar. Two more parts to go, y'all. Interesting. Hedo admires Sandman X1's strength. He also thinks he's the costume is cool, but Beta can't lose, so he tells him to use that. Beta presses the button on his bell and activates the battle jacket. That sounds awesome, yo. I love the battle jacket is the same thing that Staff Officer Black wore in the original Dragon Ball anime. Red Ribbon has a bunch of them, so we're going to see it again. I, lo I love that. It's a great callback. I'm, I'm okay with that callback, yo. Beta calls it Beta number two. Beta two launches a missile. X1 can't dodge it or else it'll hit the people. He grabs it and d diverts it into the sea. Good. That's good superhero stuff. X1's kick makes Beta 2 fall on the ground, whose impact makes my fall too. Trunks' bag opens and Garo's disc falls out of it. Hedo and Beta notice it. Mai puts the disc back in the bag and runs away from the fight. Hedo orders Beta to catch Mai. Trunks to the rescue, right? Beta 2 grabs Mai, but as Trunks is about to go save her, Beta 2 launches a series of missiles from his buttocks at the students. That sounds funny, yo. Trunks destroys each one of them, but they keep coming. Beta 2 leaves the lower half of his body to keep X1 busy with missiles as he separates his upper body and flies off into the sky with Mai. So far, I'm loving this tech, bro. I'm a big fan of, like, Dragon Ball doing mechs, and I've always liked that. Mech anime as a whole can be really fun. And manga. Just then, X2 arrives on time and destroys the lower body of Beta 2. Okay, so Goten's there, which stops the firing of missiles. Hedo is shocked to see another Saiyan man. Trunks uses his pressurized steam high pressure, <laughs> wacky, on Beta 2, which destroys the Beta 2 battle jacket, leaving Beta in his underwear. As Mai falls from the sky, X1 catches her. Mai slowly opens her eyes and sees a red scarf that reminds her of future Trunks. Oh boy, remember that storyline from the anime? It was, was that even in the manga? Uh, like the the Trunks arc manga version is like a blur to me because I don't even remember what they did when it came to Mai and Trunks. Mai blushes as X1 drops her on the ground safely. X1 and 2 introduce themselves and strike their signature poses in front of the school students. Some students think it was all just a promotion for the upcoming Clean God movie. That's pretty funny. Scale believes they are real superheroes. Rula thinks they were lame. It's, it's like they're doing the Mr. Satan thing. You know, the, um, oh, it's a trick. It's not real. You know, that whole thing? They're doing that. As X1 and X2 fly off, Trunks comes running to Mai. Trunks says he heard she was saved by a superhero. Mai looks at this guy. She says, somehow it feels like my lost, forgotten feelings have been revived. Oh, boy. She also says that X1 was very cool. As Trunks is about to confess to her that X1 is none other than him, Goten comes from behind and shuts Trunks' mouth. That's good. It's too soon for that, man. It's too soon for that. Mai wonders if she can ever meet X1 again. Beta returns to the hideout. He's sorry that he failed to get back the disc. That's lovely. Hedo admits that he was completely lost as well, lost in thinking about those cool superhero suits. This is what gives him the idea for the gammas, yo. It has to be this. 
Hedo asked Beta if he got their autograph, but he reminds him that they were their enemies. Anyway, now the targets were clear. X1, X2, and Mai. Hedo would do anything to retrieve the disc from them. The chapter ends with Hedo starting the production of the next android, who will be stronger and cooler than them. He also liked X2's red cape, so he intends to copy that. That, of course, will be Gamma 1, but he may do another Beta model prior to Gamma 1. We don't really know yet. What kind of secret is in the disc? Next time, the Saiyaman X face yet another powerful android. So that is the summary of the chapter. Very slice of life-ish. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Very slice of life-ish right there. Um, I, it sounds fun. Sounds like a fun little romp. Uh, we'll see where it goes. The trunks in my thing, it's not like the worst thing ever, but now my has got that weird crush on future trunks, which is basically present trunks just in a few more years and... You know, it it's going to lead to some possible weird stuff. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm still keeping my eyes open and my ears open to see what they do. Anyways, y'all, like I said, stream later in the week. If not next week, it'll probably be this week, but I don't want to make any promises. I will be back with Leaked in 101 very soon. Take care. Have a good one. See you soon.